Servus aus Berlin. Hi, my name is Matthias Rillich and today I'd like to talk to you about collaborations in science and how to manage these collaborations. Now, collaborations are extremely important. You will have heard this before. Uh, they're very important for your career and for getting things done and for doing better work because as part of collaborations, of course, you can pool various kinds of expertise of people uh, that is com complementary and therefore you can also do better work. And for me, collaborations are basically just what makes this all fun. So it's um, worth thinking about collaborations and here's some practical pieces of advice on how to manage them. Now, one more personal piece of advice is that for me, people are more important than particular skills. So I think it's not worth working with people that you don't like or you don't connect with. Um, so pick people that you like would be my first general advice. And also take a longer term perspective on collaborations. Think of them as not a one time occurrence, but also as investing into um, a more persistent network of collaborators. This is because sometimes you may take the lead and other times one of the other members of your network may take the lead. And so you basically, uh, you trade um, sort of shouldering most of the responsibility and that makes it all more effective. And as you take this longer term perspective, also keep in mind that uh, it's important to deliver in a collaboration that you're in right now, because that may mean that you get asked again. Now, my specific comments, I'm gonna divide two, into two situations. One, if you are the lead or if you are the contributor. So first, let's talk about if you are the lead. If you are the lead, the first point is you have to assemble the team. And that's of course, super important because the team should bring all the skills that you need, um, should be consisting of people that have complementary skills to make the project whatever the paper or the proposal overall better. Uh, but of course, you know, also you need to consider diversity at various levels of people. It can also consist of friends of yours, but it can also consist of people that you would like to get to know better. And one way is through a collaboration to really see how they are in real life. It's also important to think of people to the extent that you know that get along or will get along well during the course of that project and pick people that have a positive attitude and that you know will most likely push this forward rather than holding it up with, for example, criticism or um, worrying about everything. Now, the one very important point is that as you take the lead on um, a project or a paper, it's important that you are very clear in the expectations how you formulate them. For example, don't say, well, here's a draft and I look forward to your input. That would be not a good way to do it. it would be a better way to do it is um, here is a draft and I'm looking for specific uh, contributions to the text, not general comments. And you might also assign different people to focus on specific parts of that project or on the paper. And then very important also say, and I'm looking forward to receiving your comments by 5 p.m. on Friday, the so-and-so. Um, so it's uh, very important to also set deadlines. Don't be a tyrant about it, but be firm in the way that you specify the tasks. You will thank yourself later for that. A very practical point is to use online tools for collaboration as much as possible. I use Google Docs, but you can use any other such tool. Um, and that avoids the mess that uh, different versions of Word documents, for example, can cause. So as much as possible, move your operation to an online collaboration tool. Also important, keep everybody informed of the progress of the project or if there are any news and don't let people like wonder what's been going on. So it's important to keep people regularly updated and to inform them about every step of the way. For example, if a project has been or paper has been submitted, if you got reviewer comments back um, or if you've heard from the editor, make a point of always informing your uh, collaborators. 
And finally, um, while of course you are <laughs> dividing the work among more people, which um, you, know, you might think you're farming this out and uh, therefore it's less work for you, don't fall into that trap. I mean, it is going to be a lot of work. You will have to reconcile comments that maybe don't agree with each other. You will have to deal, first of all, with a lot of comments and make sense of out of them all. So it is quite a lot of responsibility to take on the lead on a collaboration. So make sure you're aware of that because you need to keep the people on board. Um, you need to keep it moving forward you need, need to make decisions that are important for the project and you in the end need to keep track of everything. That's a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of work. So the second part, what if you are a contributor? So nothing is more irritating than, <laughs> than people not delivering their bit on time, right? If you've ever been in a situation like that, you know that can be aggravating. So as a collaborator, make sure that you make this collaboration your priority. For me personally, it's the shame alone on being late for something and then making other people wait for me that prevents me from typically being late on anything. So I try my, my very best to always deliver things on time. And I think that is very important. Second point is do not under deliver on the tasks that you have been assigned. Um, so for example, if you were asked to write two sentences, I mean, write your two sentences, but maybe write two versions of two sentences and have the um, lead pick which ones are better. Or if you have been asked to comment on a particular paragraph, I mean, do comment on that paragraph, but also offer some insightful comments on other parts of that project. This shows that you're serious about it and that you're not taking the path of least resistance, but that you are basically uh, contributing to this project like a good friend. I think this is the attitude to take. So basically make the team better with your contributions and deliver your input generously. Also, it's important that you are aware of the phase that a project is in and that you act accordingly. For example, when this is in sort of the brainstorming phase, don't bog everything down by having just lots of criticisms and um, thinking about why this might not work, but then be optimistic and build on other people's comments. On the other hand, when this is sort of more in the refinement final stages, don't open everything up with uh, general comments again. So act according to the phase this particular project is in. And finally, of course, don't forget this is a human interaction. So say thank you, be appreciative of um, the work that the lead has done and that other people have contributed to the project and just um, be a good human in, in that interaction. And so I think um, this gives you a first overview of what's important in managing collaborations. And I hope you'll have some good ones because they make it all worth it. Hi there. If you like this video, don't forget to click like down there. And also remember to subscribe to the channel and feel free to leave comments. See ya.